Luka Doncic is out here performing all kinds of Luka magic, etching his name all over the NBA history books again with a very unique type of triple-double. But was that the best performance of the night? Also, the Pistons lost again. Extending that franchise record losing streak out to 18 straight games. When is a win in sight for these guys? Plus, we're going to have a special in-season tournament edition of Count It Up coming up on today's episode of Locked On NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are Locked On NBA. My name is Camille Davis, host of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, actually let us know in the comment section. When do you think the Pistons are going to get that first win after this extremely long losing streak? (laughs) Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So make sure you visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Joining me is Pat the Designer, host of Locked On Bulls. How you doing this evening? I mean, listen, uh, the Pistons are ugly. Luka is amazing. And the Bulls have three wins in a row. What the heck's going on? My world kind of feels right. Hey, listen, those wins make everything feel good after some losing for a while. Like, let me tell you, I know I do locked on Bucks and everything, but I've been a Bucks fan for a long time. So I yeah. went through 15 win seasons and all kinds of stuff. So I feel you on that hey, one. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not a, it was not pretty for the Bucks for a long time. They're getting what they deserve right now. Man, I used to go to bars and ask them, can you please turn the Bucks game on? They had high school <laughs> hockey games on and stuff. I'm like, please, no. I just want to see the Bucks. They're like, really? <laughs> but as we mentioned, listen, Luka Doncic, first player in NBA history to record a 25-point triple-double in a single half. The man had 29 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds at halftime. He finished the game with 40 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, and three quarters of play because – the Mavs were beating the Jazz down so bad, it didn't even, they didn't even need him in the fourth quarter. Mavs won 147 to 97, a 50 point dub for the Mavericks. And like I said, Luca was on one. I saw Tim Cato tweet ahead of the game that Luca hit about 13 straight threes when he was warming up, and that Luca's warm up routine is not your normal warm up routine. So he predicted ahead of the game that it might be one of those nights for him, and it looked like it really was. Yeah, I mean, you you saw Luca come out tonight, and just the efficiency, the 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 thing that really stood out to me was how he moved the ball. Still, right? Like we're talking about a triple double here in the first half of this entire game. Like that was insanity. What we saw from Luca, of course, his ability to shoot the three, but just his ability. Right? We were texted back and forth during this game, and it was literally just like, okay. Um, why does he score so effortlessly when it just looks like I, I said he's he's a better passing Paul Pierce is one of those things where science can't explain it. But six for 10 from the three point line in the first half, you saw the 10 assists. You knew he could go out there and get the rebound numbers. It was just Luca playing with his food tonight. That's really what it felt like. And as the second half came, right, like it was just, OK, we're done. We know what this is. We knew what this was going to be from the start of this game, right? Like you said, 13 straight threes in, in, in the warm up. So it was really cool to see. I thought that he had a excellent, excellent night. And I, I love the fact that all you can do on a night like this, if you're Chris Dunn, is just be like, I got to fight him. Like, there's no he way tried. you're scoring on me and I can't fight you. He tried. And Lucas said, I don't even know why he mad. He just mad because he, he losing up in here tonight. And Chris had to just laugh. Like, I mean, <laughs> That is what it is at this point. 97 is insane. Truly, truly. Like, this is Luka's 60th career triple-double. He has now moved past Larry Bird on that list into sole position of nine all-time triple-doubles in the NBA. Luka is 24 years old. Yep. He has played 349 regular season games, and he is already top 10 in triple-doubles in NBA history. He's an absolute animal. Like I, I love what I'm seeing from him. I, I love the the way that he's really 
it, it doesn't feel like he's had that slow start to the season that we often saw from Luca, right? Normally, Luca and the Mavs just get off to a really slow start, and then they kind of work themselves back into it. This mm-hmm. Luca seems like he's taking the league by storm. He's taking the league so much more seriously, and he's just like, look, y'all know who I am. At this point, I know who I am, and I'm not going to have these lulls to start the season. We're coming out guns blazing. So it's good to see him play as well as he did, and I think that, it's going to be tough for somebody else to to outdo what we saw in the first half of the game. Now, scoring outputs in total, right? Joel and B was a great game. Yeah. But a triple-double in the first half, a 29-point triple-double in first the first half. half is the most insane thing that I've seen in a long time. So what you're telling me is that what Luka did tonight, you putting that on top of the top performances from the night because we had the Luka triple-dub. You mentioned MB dropping 50. He had 50 points, 12 rebounds, seven assists. He shot over 50% from the field. He was 19 of 28 from the field. Man, hooping. And then you have Paolo Bancaro. Now, the Magic did lose, but he had a career-high 42 points, six rebounds in this game. The youngest Magic player since Shaq with a 40-point game. Yeah. You had Desmond Bain, career-high 49 points, eight assists, six rebounds, 19 of 31 from the field. Just efficient cooking this evening hey, listen there was a lot of great scoring outputs right cool. but it was the thing about the Embiid scoring 50 is nothing to scoff at right never will I say a 50 point game is not impressive even though we're seeing more of them now than we've ever seen before but it took literally all 50 of those points for you to beat the Washington Wizards by five that's that's one of those games where it's like you know listen what we saw Luca do tonight versus a bad jazz team is what you're supposed to see good basketball teams do, not beat the Wizards by five. Now, the Wizards played one of their best games of the season. Give the Wizards credit for going out there and competing, but it took all 50 of those points to beat them. To me, that is the one that, I guess if you're going to throw one in there, right, that's the one that you got to throw in there as two. But outside of that, 29, and like he didn't have to play the fourth. He could have got 50. He could have. He could. He wasn't even trying in the third. If we being one hundred percent honest, I mean, he only had one additional was an assist in the in the third quarter. Rebound, one additional rebound in the third quarter. That man was trying to get some some buckets at that point, and just like you said, because normally when you hear playing with your food, you think you're not taking the game seriously. But yeah. Luca, they just they just dog walked the Jazz like it was no competition. They took care of business, like you said, and that's what you're supposed to do against bad teams and. As somebody watches the Bucks night in and night out, that's what you're hearing from a lot of our fans saying, well, why are these games so close? And it's like, hey, man, I don't listen. I ain't got all them answers for you right now. They're figuring <laughs> things out. But, yeah, the, Ma- the the Mavericks did what they were supposed to do tonight. And I would agree with you. Luca's performance to me is number one for sure. And then Embiid's 50-12 and seven is super impressive. And the it's only impressive. other one that you could argue would be Desmond Bain's 49, eight and six. But I think I would give it to Embiid still over Bain. Um, it's just about getting that that even 50, even though that was a career high for Bain tonight. Again, just some dope performances this evening. Desmond Bain's was insane because it's Desmond Bain, right? Like that. that's why, and it's no slight to Desmond Bain, heck of a player, right? But 49 from Desmond Bain is just like, okay, where did that come from? That felt like it came completely out of left field. Absolutely dominating tonight. But again, right, you're talking about you needed all 49 of those points Mm -hmm. to get the Pistons, who we'll talk about in the next segment, their 18th straight loss, a team that they just seem abysmal. They they have – it feels like this early in the season they have no fight left in them, right? So it's like there's a long way to go for that Pistons team. Ton of question marks on that, and it took all 49 of your points. Again, Luka sitting in the fourth. Like, I love what we saw from Desmond Bain. He's he's proven time and time again that he can be uh, a guy who can get the offense going, but he was the offense tonight. I think even the fact that, right, it was really just him and Jaron Jackson all night. Going back Pretty and re-looking at that Pistons game, I had it. I don't know if you know how YouTube TV, did, it worked, but, like, you always got one game that's just stuck in the corner that you don't really want to watch. That was that game. Um, but every time I looked down, it was him, and anytime there was a miss, it was Jaron Jackson putting it back for a bucket, right? So, like, when you get that combination versus the Pistons, 
it's going to be a long night for Detroit, even though this uh, this Grizzly start to the season has not been pretty in the slightest. And that's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, we spent the top of this this show talking about impressive performances, but we already mentioned the fact that we want to talk more about the Pistons because yep. losing 18 straight games is nuts. Like, that's a lot of losing. To go an entire month without losing and then you flip the calendar and you still losing? Like, that does something to the soul. Oh, yeah. To the soul. So – I just want to take a look at when is the next win in sight for the Pistons. And I want to take a look at that schedule that they have and make some predictions at like Nashadamas a little bit. So let's do that coming up next. Want to talk to you about FanDuel because listen, as the weather continues to get colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. And if you ask Bill Belichick, the NFL season doesn't even really start until you get to Thanksgiving. And now we're in December, so it's really real at this point. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's really real too, y'all. 150 bucks if your team wins. So if you have been thinking about joining FanDuel, trust me when I say there is no better time to get in on the action. I mean, the app is super easy to use and there's a wide range of betting options for you to choose from. Between spreads, player props, over-unders, and a whole lot more. So make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and keep the NFL season rolling in the right direction. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you for hanging out with us here on Locked On NBA. We truly appreciate all the everydayers for tapping in with us on a daily basis. And we also hope that you will tap into the Locked On Sports today because Locked On launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. On Locked On Sports today, you can expect coverage of the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So make sure you head over to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. As mentioned, man, the Pistons lost again. And I just want to have a question, like, when will they win again? Because they haven't won a game since October 28th. Again, 18 straight L's. Historic for the Pistons. It's it's not pretty, right? Like, this is, this is a team that you had a lot riding on coming into this season. This is a team that invested a lot uh, in what they added to the team, right? You're, you're talking about going out, getting Monty Williams. He's supposed to be the answer for a lot of these young pieces that you're trying to put together, that you're trying to figure out. And it just seems like the wheels fell off almost immediately with this team, right? Like, to me, I have a hard time seeing wins for this team because it feels like with a young team like this, and listen, I've been through the 22-win seasons with the Chicago Bulls, right? And when you're a young team like this, you kind of need those victories to give you some confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. This Pistons team is going to be in for a long season because when you look at this, right, you got coming up Paolo Bencaro, who, I mean, has absolutely eviscerated pretty much everybody he's gone up against this year. Uh, he's coming off a huge night. Uh, he's got the Pistons at home where the Magic are pretty much unbeatable. You got the Pacers after that, 76ers in back-to-back -back games, the Bucks, the Hawks. Maybe the Jazz is the first game where you start to feel like, okay, they're bad enough for you to go out there and beat. But I don't even feel like the Jazz are a bad enough team, even with Luka giving them a triple-double in the first half, for you to say that they're bad enough for you to go out there and predict them to lose, right? Like, I still think, look, who's going to guard Larry Marketing? I, I I don't know anybody on that team that can. You got the Nets after that for back-to-back -back games, Celtics, right? Like, mm. this could get to the point where we're talking about the Pistons breaking the all-time losses in a row record. Yeah, and the 76ers actually hold that distinction. They lost 26 straight games in the 2013-14 season. And if you want to look at combining different seasons, that streak's actually up to eight or 28 because if you take the end of the 2015-16 season and roll that into 2016-17, then they lost 28 straight games. And like you mentioned, this piston schedule is not favorable. Like that Philly back-to-back, -back, like home and away split with them. And then after you go to Philly to play on the 15th, you're in Milwaukee on the 16th on a back-to-back. -back. Yeah. 
that's tough. And then you keep traveling to Atlanta, like you mentioned. The Utah game comes up. If they don't win at Utah, then you have another home and away series against Brooklyn. Then you have Boston in the Garden. Then you have Toronto at home, Houston on the road, Utah on the road again, <laughs> Golden State on the road, Denver, Sacramento yeah. at home, San Antonio. And if you don't get those Utah games, you're looking at San Antonio again because for all the Wimby hype, they're still figuring out things to win. A lot of things in Sac- San Antonio I don't understand, like the whole Jeremy Sohan experiment at point guard that seemed to have ended <laughs> that tonight. Was, that thing. was wild. That was a wild time for him. Like, what was happening with that? But right. we're not talking about the Spurs right now. We're focused on the Pistons and they're losing at the moment. But truly, I think that December 21st against the Utah Jazz is like the first real opportunity for a victory for this team with how things are going. Yeah, and I think what's tough is, right, you're just seeing kind of this, almost the regression of the talents that you thought there were. Of course, Cade, you know that Cade can go out there and play night in and night out, which you expected so much more from this team. And yeah. I think one thing that's really hurting them is it seems like, to me, everywhere Monty Williams goes, he has to hate one guy, right? And and that guy right now seems to be Jaden Ivey. Yes, I, Jaden yes. Ivey getting 23 minutes in the game, right? But it just feels like, he doesn't have the freedom to go out there and play the way that he was able to play last season. Uh, he doesn't have the freedom to take as many shots, doesn't have the freedom to to play his game. And I think that's really hurting the Pistons. I don't think that you can put him in the starting lineup per se because I don't know how the dynamic of him and uh, uh, Cade Cunningham works together on the floor, but that was the dynamic that Monty Williams was supposed to be brought in there to build up. And it seems like he has no interest whatsoever in trying to flourish that relationship, trying to make that the young backcourt of the future here. And so now you're looking at this situation where Jaden Ivey feels probably like, okay, well, I thought that I was coming here to be a major part of what we're doing. And basically you got me coming off of the bench playing filler minutes at this point. Why? Because I can't shoot the three ball as well, right? Like I think that killing his confidence early on has really put a serious damper on having that guy who last season could be an efficient score for you, mm-hmm. could be somebody who can be an extra score for you uh, uh, off of the bench, even if you needed to, right? Like maybe just say, we're going to change our role here a little bit, but we're still going to utilize you the same blah, 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 and give you the opportunity. I just think that killing that, killing the momentum that he had coming out of last season to start this season has really set the Pistons moving in the wrong direction. You point out the fact that he only played 24 minutes tonight. And the crazier part about that is none of those minutes came in the first quarter. Like the Pistons went 10 deep in the first quarter and did not play Ivy at all in those minutes. He didn't get his first playing time until the second quarter kicked off. And then after the game, you have Monty Williams saying, well, maybe Ivy needs more playing time. And it's like, you, you don't say, you don't say, I don't understand what's been going on with the Pistons. Monty's been throwing out lineups with all five bench guys and no starters, no staggering any starters. Like yeah. he was playing Wiseman over Bagley tonight. It's just some things with that rotation where I'm like, I try to give new coaches grace. And I say it again, I'm going through that right now with the Bucks, but you got to give a new coach some grace to figure out who he has on his roster, how he wants to play them, how they fit into a system. But I just keep going back to the fact that Monty didn't even really want to coach this season. It was just that the bag got so big with so much control in the franchise that he couldn't he couldn't turn the offer down. And now he's in this situation where it's a lot of losing going on and he's getting frustrated. Seems like he's throwing players under the bus in press conferences after games. Like guys need to defend. They got, they're not doing their job. And yeah. things just don't seem like they're going well at all in Detroit right now. And I it's tough to let, to see another victory in sight before that Utah game. Don't be surprised if this turns into, can we trade off young pieces to go be competitive now? Like that is one thing that I would really watch for the Pistons with, right? Because it's at a point when the fan base is kind of like, all right, listen, we went all in with these young guys. This doesn't seem to work. Mm-hmm. Fans are never patient enough, but it has been a while. since I think the Pistons last, ooh, last playoff win is... I know they were in the playoffs against the Bucks a few years ago, but they didn't get a win. I mean, like that's it's been a while, right? At the end of the day, Pistons' last playoff win has been a long time ago, right? And to me, the 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 part that you have to start looking at is one you've given Monty Williams his control. Monty Williams is not going to want to sit here and keep losing with young pieces. Yeah, he's going to want to develop this, build his system up, but he'd be somebody I'd watch out for 
trying to dip his uh, 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 the Pistons name. Yeah, say that the right way. Dip the Pistons <laughs> name into uh, some of these young pieces or or some of these pieces that are already proven uh, in their trade market. Right. Don't be surprised with with the news tonight that Zach Levine is set to miss three yeah. or four more weeks if we don't see the Pistons try and get their name in the trade market, which is something that we had heard as well. That's so interesting to think about because it's like, are the Pistons really a Zach Levine away from, you know, no. like it's, 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 it's one of those moves that feels like it's just something to do in the meantime to try to get a few more wins to, uh, to try to at least like give these fans something to cheer about. Like at least we can cheer about being mediocre at this point, but one thing with the Pistons, too, before we move off of them, that's really interesting. In this game, Jalen Durant, Jalen Durant injured himself again. And after the game, there wasn't any update about the status of him. He's already missed seven games this season, and he is the crux to their defense at this point. Like, that young man means a lot to this Pistons team. So if he's out for an extended period of time, like, their prospects of getting another dub just continue to go down, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, they have pretty much no defense inside or without him. You like Asher Thompson and what he's been able to do, but there's just there's so much of a, a, of a reliance on. Like, again, even Asur, right? Like, I like the defense that he plays, but he can't find his way back into the starting lineup. He can't, right? Like, there's there's too many guys on this team that you're having the same conversation about. And then now you're, what are you rolling with, Wiseman or Bagley? Like, which one is the one that you want to take more chance on, right? Like both of them are pretty much the same guy at this point in Detroit. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of pieces here that you're going to be talking about. Just need a clean slate. That is not the Detroit Pistons and pray for Koo because he can't take it. Listen, I've just got here in this locked on network family and listen, Koo has already aged like five years <laughs> since <laughs> the start of this season with the Detroit hey, you know, Pistons. Bro, yeah, like, Koo, Koo is uh, Koo's not doing well. Koo's yeah. not doing well. Y'all keep cooing your prayers. Please do. And also let us know in the comments when you think the Pistons will get their next win when you take a look at their schedule. Now, Thursday's editions of Locked on NBA, you got to count it up. That's a tradition. And Nick oh, yeah. might not be here, but we're going to keep the tradition going right oh, after we come back from this. I like that. want to talk to you about prize picks because, listen, Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS because it's just you against the numbers. You don't have to worry about battling thousands of other players and pros and sharks and all of them other people. You just pick more than or less than on two to six different player stat projections, and then you just continue to watch the winnings roll in. And if you're anything like me, when I'm prize picking, I like my money quick in my hand as fast as possible when I get a victory. And I love the fact that Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account whenever you get those dubs. Between the quick withdrawals, the easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types, you can easily see why Prize Picks is the number one daily span or fantasy app. So make sure you head on over to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, Visit prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Pat, it is time to count it up. Oh, snap. I'm ready for it. Zion Williams and points to take that for that. Count it up. Count it up. Count it up. Yay, yay. A special in-season tournament edition of yeah. Count It Up with the game starting as you listen to this today on Thursday, December 7th in Vegas. We got news, Pat, that the NBA is preventing the Lakers from wearing their black uniforms because of concerns over how the uniforms might clash with the specialized in-season tournament court that they have here for the semifinals at the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas. So, the Lakers have been wearing those black city edition uniforms throughout their NCAA tournament games. They went undefeated in group play wearing those jerseys. They really like them. And when one Lakers player was asked about the fact that they're going to have to wear their gold jerseys instead, he responded, quote, that's ass. So on a scale from one to 10, 
how ass is it that the NBA won't let the Lakers wear their black city edition uniforms during the end season tournament when they've worn them all this time through group play? Count it up. I'm, uh, you know what it is too. I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go all in, right? I'm gonna say ten. Okay. And I'm gonna say ten for one reason and one reason only. Because it, players are creatures of habit, and you want this to be the best tournament that you can have. I think that literally this could be something that like messes with the psyche of the Lakers. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I think that just let them wear the jerseys that you've let them wear the entire time. What do you, what do they have to wear the gold for so that you could take nice pictures on your red, white, and blue court? Like a court's ugly, by the way, all of the courts are ugly. The bulls one is maybe the, uh, well, the bulls one was kind of like the bulls one was hard to watch. The jazz is my favorite. That purple on purple. But see, that should have been the Lakers court. You would think. <laughs> Why was that the Jazz court? So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 10 just because of the stupidity that has surrounded the NBA and a lot of this in season tournament. But how much do I care on a scale of one to ten? Like, yeah, you know I mean, like one, go out there and play basketball. <laughs> No, I feel it. And like you said, players, they're creatures of habit. And I know LeBron has a history of enjoying his black uniforms. I mean, the Lakers won their bubble championship wearing the black Mamba yeah. jerseys. They wore those a lot. Even you go back to his cap or the Cavalier days when they won their chip, they wore the black jerseys a lot. So LeBron liked them black jerseys, but he ain't going to get them in Vegas this time around. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see kind of what they go out there and do. I mean, listen, when you call timeout on a loose ball, though, like... <sighs> That's not really it was so ball. bad, even Adam Silver laughed about it today. He said, that's what we call in the front office a close call. I was like, what? A close call. A close call. Oh, okay. All right, cool. I'm, I wonder if that's like referee speak. Like, oh, it's just such a close call. No, that means uh, it's such a bad call that uh, we can't throw our refs under the bus on public television. Hey, I love that you are uh, Adam Silver's not anger translator, yeah, but I'm, I'm real talk silver. translator. <laughs> One more question for you for Count It Up. Damian Lillard, he was asked what he would change about the end season tournament. And he said, first, the courts. And then he said, I want the league to up the price. And someone asked him, like, oh, when you say up the price, do you mean like you want a playoff spot or like more money? And Dame just looked at him, deadpan face, and said, money. I mean, that's how you're going to get people in. Like, that's how you sweeten the pot. They already get five hundred million or five hundred thousand dollars per t- player on the winning team. Players earn two hundred thousand by reaching the finals, and then all players on all four teams who've made it to Vegas all walk away with one hundred and fifty thousand per player. So, with all that being said, would you like to see the players get a little bit more prize money to continue to up that intensity for the end season tournament, or do you think another change should be made? Count it up. Count it. I'm gonna tell you this right now. There's nothing I care less than. A millionaire, a multi-millionaire, <laughs> complaining that he's not getting paid enough money mm. to go out there and compete. Well, if you want players to compete in this, you have to go out there and pay them more money. What? How about you just go play basketball? How about you go play a children's game for millions of dollars? Like, what are we talking about here? Though? Like, we talking about... he? It, it, <laughs> I get it, right? Here's the thing. For Dame, there is no incentive. $500,000. Now, listen. I work with athletes every day. Mm-hmm. They still tell you $500,000, $500,000. Facts. Right? You saw Zion Williamson and B.I. tonight, right? We know what they on. They, they on games. What, what, what y'all gonna do with the money? <laughs> you already know where they gonna be at. In Vegas? We know where they gonna be at. We know exactly where Zion is heading in this whole situation, right? <laughs> Like Zion Williamson and porn star. Come on, they get a notification every time he enters the city. Like that <laughs> that plays every time Zion enters the city. But at the end of the day, I don't care that Damian Lillard is whining about how much money that if you want people to play hard in this, then give them this much money. Okay, don't win it then. 
Because there are teams that are in this that are playing hard. Guess what? The Pelicans are playing hard. They don't want to lose to the Lakers. They want to go to Vegas. They want to be in the – well, they in Vegas, but they want to be in the finals. They want to win this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, maybe – like, I'm not telling you that right now, today, this is going to be a major thing, but I am telling you that $500,000 is $500,000, whether it's Damian Lillard or not, and stop whining about, well, it should be a million dollars. Now, if we want to have a conversation on should incentives be different, as far as impact on the season, mm-hmm. I'm willing to have that conversation. But I'm not having a conversation on I should get paid more for this. Go get some more wine from Portland then. Like, like I love I love how the loyalty thing with Dame is I don't know. Never mind. I'm going too far on the tent. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. It's, it's too deep for the intro. But no, I, I feel it though, because the thing with the money, like I get it for those players who are on bet men's. Like it makes sense. You're only making like two million this season as it is. So that's a fourth of your salary from playing games that you would already play. Well, you get the extra if you in the championship game, but regular season games that you would be playing anyways. And you yeah. can have a chance to make half a million dollars off of that. I definitely get it for those guys. To your point about Dame saying, well, up the money some more if you want more comp. I don't even know if we necessarily need that. Like, I think players are seeing how this tournament is playing out and they already kind of into it. Like KD, when they lost against the Lakers, he was like, no, I'm tuned in. Like this was, this is exciting. I'm I'm with this. And you mentioned how some of these other teams are super excited. The Pacers, the energy that they had when they were beating the Celtics. I, I was like, this looks like a playoff game for real. And for teams that haven't won anything yet, these games are going to be an even bigger deal. Like Tyrese Halliburton said, if there's a banner, I want a banner. I yeah. ain't want nothing else. Give me an in-season tournament banner. That's that's also growth. <laughs> the, the medals, the I can deal with a lot. We're not hanging banners for in-season tournament win. We're not hanging banners. Let's let, let where are we drawing the line at, right? Like, I'm glad they didn't give them a ring. I'm glad there's no in-season tournament ring. I'm actually glad about that. But I mean, like, even to your point, right? Like, I look at the the Bucks lineup. Mm-hmm. Whose life? is this extra $500,000 change? A.J. Green, maybe, right? Into the bench guy. A.J. Green, probably. All the end of the bench dudes. Well, you would think so, right? But uh, is the NASA's broke ever <laughs> in his life? Not, not in life. Through right. his salary as a minimum. Cameron Payne and got paid multiple times. He got good money coming his way. Um, Robin Lopez set. Him and his brother both on the team. They pretty rich. Yeah. Andre Jackson Jr., maybe, right? Well, but he's he, broke. Yeah. There's probably some hope for him to make some money in the future. Like, I get it for this season. I get it for right now. But, like, what? it's not to, – to act like, well, he's only making $2 million this year or he's only making $3 million. He dribbles a ball and puts it in a hole. And you're still a millionaire. And he's making so much money. How about we talk about teaching these mugs how to save some money that's on the end of this bench? You're not at that point yet. Like, that's the conversation we need to have. I digress. I I feel like I just turned into an old man live on Locked On NBA. (laughs) You say, get off my lawn real quick. It was a little bit, yeah. I felt like they were stepping on my grass. I just watered it, you know what I mean? It's the fall time. I got the leaves up, and you gonna step? Come on now, let's not do that. Don't have your dog pee on me, (laughs) y'all. No, I feel the energy for real, for real. I had a ball today on Locked On NBA with you, Pat. And I hope that people continue to check out the Locked On Network, especially Locked On Sports today. As mentioned, it's 24-7 coverage of the top sports stories of the day with all the local experts from Locked On who know what they're talking about because we're watching these teams day in and day out. So make sure you head over to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to Locked On Sports today. But for Pat and myself, we're going to get out of here. We hope that y'all have a wonderful rest of y'all day. Congrats on your first locked on NBA. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, all right. That was too much applause. That was, that was a little, it went a little hard. Raucous applause. Yeah, that was raucous. Peace.